Welcome back to another recap. This is going to be 90 Day Fiancé Season 10, Episode 4. We're obsessed with TLC and all the trashy reality TV. It's a recap. It's a recap. It's a recap. Starting with Jasmine and Gino. After their massage, Gino has been giving Jasmine the cold shoulder. You know, he's not really happy about what he found out. He just found out that she spent $10,000 on her ass implants. And not only that, $4,000 of it came from him unknowingly. He gave her that money for a wedding dress, but she went behind his back and uh, contributed that money to her ass implants. And he doesn't even know the worst part, that she borrowed 2000 of the dollars from Dan, her ex, that he doesn't like because she kept gloating to him about how he was the best f ever. So yeah, obviously Gino is going to be pretty pissed when he finds out. But Jasmine, surprisingly, she feels guilty. She's very understanding of Gino's anger. She admits that what she did was very selfish. Again, who is this Jasmine? I have a feeling if this were in Panama, she'd be screaming her head off, yelling at him about how she deserves this. So she goes into her room. She calls one of her sisters. She gives her the 411 about how Gino quit his job. And she's very worried about how he's going to sponsor her kids to come over. And the sister's like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. And then she goes, well, you know, I'm not that innocent either because, uh, you know, I got the $2,000 from Dan for my ass implants. And the sister's like, oh, does Gino know? And she's like, no, I can't tell him yet. And then in her confessional, she says that she sees Dan as her brother. As a brother? Oh, hell no, you don't see him as a brother. A brother that you f***ed? A brother that you said was your best f ever? Oh, Jasmine. Jazzy, what are you saying? Oh, ar nar. The sister's like, you need to tell Gino, just come clean, okay? He deserves the truth. And Jasmine's crying, acknowledging that she does have to tell him and he's going to be so pissed off. But you know what? She's a smart cookie because she knows not to tell him right now because emotions are heightened. He's still pissed off. So if she were to tell him right now, he'd be even more pissed off and he might kick her out and send her back to Panama. She knows to wait until he's in a really good mood, perhaps while he's in a golden shower. Later that day, Gino and Jasmine sit down to talk about everything. And Gino tells her that he feels betrayed because she lied to him and went behind his back. And this is where I kind of got in my feels because <laughs> I feel like it's a, re a relatable to a lot of women. She was like, you know what, Gino? I, I don't see myself the way you see me. I have always dealt with this problem. Like, I am very insecure when it comes to my body. I'm sorry for being like this. There was another part where she was pretty damn manipulative. She was like, you know what, Gino, you did the same thing. Like you hid that you quit your job from me. And he's like, oh no, Jasmine, that is not the same thing. And she's like, yeah, it is. And she goes, if you told me that you quit your job, I would have never, ever gotten the ass implants. Like I just thought we would always have money flowing in. <laughs> so if you told me, I wouldn't have done it. If you have told me this, like you quit your job, that we were under a very tight budget, I, I promise I, I would never spend this money. And I was like, damn, Jasmine, like that is really freaking manipulative. Stop turning it around on him. And then he goes, Jasmine, you're beautiful the way you are. I like you just the way you are. You don't need any of these surgeries. And she was like, oh, you know, I took out my hair extensions for the first time in 15 years. But I'm trying my best. I just took away my hair extension that I used to spend thousands and thousands of dollars Baby, and embrace my natural hair that I hated. And we learned that she actually struggles with alopecia. And as soon as she was diagnosed and she was losing her hair, that's when she started getting extensions and wigs because she was super insecure about losing her hair that she wanted to cover it up. And I feel like a lot of us can relate to some level. For me personally, it was um, my acne. I used to cake on foundation and concealer just so that it would hide my acne. And I think there were like four years where I could not ever not wear foundation. And I would sleep with it. For four years, I slept in foundation. Do you know how gross that is? Because I didn't want anyone to see me without my makeup. 
And so I feel like I can relate to her in that way. Like my foundation and my makeup was my security blanket and her hair was her security blanket. So I get it. It's tough once you take that out. Um, Recently, I went on like a no makeup journey just because I wanted to start embracing myself, you know, my flawed skin. I wanted to start embracing that. Um, it's, it, I remember in the beginning, it was so hard. I had such a hard time going out in public, even grocery shopping. Like I couldn't make eye contact. I would just like put my head down and just avoid everybody because I didn't want them to see my skin. After a couple months, it got so much better. Like I have shitty ass skin, but I don't care. Like if you don't like it, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> It's so crazy how you can really build confidence and acceptance by just putting yourself in uncomfortable situations and just working really hard at it. So I encourage y'all, if you have an insecurity, do what's that called? Oh, God, I've had so many brain farts where I cannot think of the word I'm trying to say, but it's like exposure therapy. Maybe that was the word I'm thinking of, but just do it no matter how hard it is, even if you have to go do it for like five seconds, just five seconds is fine. Just do it. And then the next time go for 10 seconds. And when she was talking about how she doesn't see herself the way he sees her and how she's so insecure about her body, that really hit home. I think a lot of women can relate and and men. And so when she was talking about that, I started crying because it brought me back to my super insecure days where I wouldn't leave the house because I felt so fat and ugly and disgusting and like a worthless, ugly piece of shit that should just die and rot. (laughs) And I became antisocial for a long time, you guys. I would not go out. I would not leave the house unless I absolutely had to. Anyway, sorry for the long tangent, but Gino um, really tried to reassure her. He gave her a hug. She was crying, and I thought that was a very sweet, vulnerable, raw moment. You're beautiful the way you are. Don't you see? You're beautiful. (laughs) This was so heartfelt and so sweet. (laughs) I love them. But Jasmine still has a secret. Dan. Dan gave her $2,000 for her butt implants. And because she doesn't want to ruin this moment, this amazing moment, she doesn't tell him. She's going to hold on to that secret for a little bit longer. And I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be worse if you hold in that secret. I feel like she should have just told him right there while they were being honest with each other. When Gino finds out later, whenever she decides to tell him, he's going to remember that moment. He's going to be like, oh my God, we had that honest moment like four months ago and you you held on to that secret this whole time. And he's not going to trust her even more. So yeah. Moving on to Rob and Sophie. They go to meet Rob's sister, Victoria, who is also a party planner and therefore is going to help them plan their wedding. This is Sophie's first time meeting his sister, so she's super nervous. But when they finally met his sister, Victoria, oh my gosh, she was so bright, so fun, so happy and excited for them. I don't know what happened to Rob to make him so salty and grouchy, but Victoria was a breath of fresh air. They sit down and talk about what they want for their wedding. And then Victoria asks, so are you guys planning on having any kids? And Rob is like, yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. And Sophie's like, "Mm, well, I I don't know. Like, I just I kind of don't want to be pregnant. And Victoria goes, have you guys talked about this? And Rob goes, yeah, we're definitely having kids someday. And Sophie's like, "Mm, well, I don't know about that. And he's like, what do you mean? Uh, What do you think it means, Rob? It means she doesn't want to be pregnant. So you never want kids, huh? Mm, Not really. Is this going to be a deal breaker? So you don't want to have kids? If I don't ever want kids, is that a problem with you? Because right now in my head, that's the case, if I'm being honest with you. And he goes, yeah, I've always wanted kids. I tell you all the time how much I want kids. And he throws a complete bitch fit and he walks away. He's like, I just need some time alone to breathe. (gasps) And he goes and he's so dramatic. That's the problem is you guys never had this conversation. There was a lot of assuming and thinking, but nobody talked. He's so affected by this that he's actually crying in his confessional. He's like, he has a tear streaming down, another tear streaming down. And he's like, I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life if I don't have kids. Like, "Mm, I feel like maybe you could focus on yourself before bringing a child into this world. (laughs) Like, where would they live? In his current apartment with no bathroom and barely a kitchen. And what is he going to do for work? Nothing. Like, I feel like that should take priority himself like what he's gonna do with his life 
and then maybe think about having kids. Also, how did they think it was a good idea to get married without talking about whether or not they were going to have kids? That's crazy. According to Rob, he's always told her that he wanted kids. They've even talked about baby names. Now, Sophie tells Victoria, because Rob is off, you know, crying, and she tells her that when she was 15, she had a cyst in her left ovary, and she had to have it surgically removed, and it was life-threatening. And the doctor told her that this might affect her egg production, therefore she may not be able to have kids. And because of that, she always just told herself that she didn't want to have kids, so that it would kind of protect her from the hurt of wanting kids and then being told that she can't have any because that would hurt way more. Now, remember how Rob said that he mentioned kids all the time? Well, Sophie says he's never once mentioned about wanting kids. Not once. She's never heard him say that. So somebody's lying and I feel like it's Rob. <laughs> so Sophie excuses herself from Victoria and she goes to find Rob. She's like, oh, where is he? Like, I don't want him to be mad at me. And so she finds him angrily shooting hoops on one of the game game machines or whatever. He's just like chucking the balls. And she's like, um, are you mad at me? And he goes, I don't know what I'm going to do if we don't have kids. Like, what am I supposed to do with my life? Uh, no offense, but I could think of at least like 25 things you could do before you have kids. So um, if you need help, email me and I can send you that list. Even Jay-Z and Beyonce got kids. Okay, how is this relevant to you? Sophie's like, are you okay? He's like, man, I don't want to talk right now. Leave me alone. And a few minutes later, his sister walks up to him to make sure he's okay. She kind of gives him the heads up. Listen, Sophie um, opened up to me and said that it's like a medical issue that she's very sensitive about. So just hear her out. And he still acts like a big fat baby. It's time for them to go home. He drives them home. They get in the car. She's freezing. Oh, sorry. The car doesn't even have heat. So let's add that to the list of things he needs to get done before he has a child. He's so pissed off during the entire car ride. He doesn't look at her. He doesn't talk to her. He's giving her the complete silent treatment, a la Bilal. Remember Bilal and Shida? He would just freaking always give her the silent treatment. So I've said all along that he gives me major red flags. And it's not just creepy, weirdo, Mike and Jimena red flags. It's in my opinion, okay? This is just my opinion. He gives off major emotional abuser vibes. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that it's true. I'm not saying it's 100% definite. Like, I don't know. But from what I'm seeing on the show and how he's treating her, that's how I feel. I feel like he's an emotional abuser. I don't know what's going on with him, but he needs help. And Sophie needs to go back. Like, she needs to, like, run away. Next is Nikki and Justin Igor. Now, Justin Igor takes Nikki to his apartment, finally, after the airport, and he gives her a tour. And apparently, she loaned him some money to fix up his bathrooms. And she sees that he did indeed fix them with the money that she gave to him, and so she's happy. She's like, well, I see that he really fixed up the bathroom for me to make it more comfortable for me, so I'm really, really happy. They go to the bedroom, and Nikki throws herself on the bed with her outside clothes. Y'all know how I feel about outside clothes on the bed. Honestly, if that were my bed, I would have shoved her off so fast. By the way, this bed feels like so comfortable. He does not care. Nope. She playfully gets on top of him and she's like, let's go take a shower. And he's not wanting to do that, like, at all. What the hell is that? Like, what are they doing? Is that a dance? It's a brand new day. And Nikki tells Justin Igor to give her about 90 minutes for her to get ready. An hour and a half to get ready for the park. And he's like, 90 minutes? But baby, I like you when you're more natural. And she goes, um, that is my natural makeup routine. Like, if I were doing full glam, it would take me like three hours. I also noticed that in the scene, her eyes look so much darker. So does that mean she wears... Uh, colored contacts to make her eyes super, super light. Like I know that she changed her eye color surgically, but I think what happened was when you naturally have dark eyes, you can't make them super, super light, you know, when you kind of like dye your hair without bleach. So I feel like she did get her eye surgically lightened, but she needs to put contacts on top of that to make it like really
really shine. But honestly, I loved her eye color without the contacts. So she's putting on her makeup and Justin Igor's like, how much more time do you need? And she gets annoyed. She's like, oh my God, Justin, if you want a woman who doesn't wear makeup, then go date a Russian girl. You always knew that I wore makeup. And the thing is, he never complained about her wearing makeup or her getting ready, like taking hours before he found out that she was trans. It was only after he found out that she was trans that it bothers him and that he's trying to act like all manly and macho and stuff like that. So she's done getting ready. They go to the park, they get ice cream and Nikki gets some on her cheek as she's trying to like eat it or whatever. Like there's some on her cheek and she goes, can you lick it off, Justin? And he goes, no, no, no. And she's like, lick it. Come on, lick it off, babe. And he's like, no. And she goes, lick it now. <laughs> Just kidding. But literally she gets so upset that he won't lick her ice cream off her face. I mean, I don't think anyone would voluntarily want to do that. I wouldn't want to do that. Like, I don't want to eat makeup. Like, just wipe it off with a napkin. What is your freaking deal? They sit down and he wants to play like this puzzle game. She's getting sexually frustrated because it's been nine months since they've had smacks. And this whole time she keeps making jokes and innuendos. And she's like, where's my hot dog? Oh, I want my hot dog. Oh, I'm so hungry. And he's just ignoring them, just not responding to any of them. And she goes, Justin, why are we not having sex? Are you not sexually attracted to me? Um, lady, maybe you should take off your baby doll decapitated head earrings. Okay, if I were the guy, I wouldn't want to be on top of you looking at those <laughs> baby doll heads. We haven't done it in nine months. Are you seeing somebody else? And he goes, uh, baby, our relationship is from the soul. She's like, okay, so you're going to be distant until you need money again. And then you're going to be all nice. Baby, it is not always about physical. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so sick of this. Couples who are in love make love. What does that mean? Justin Ewer, stop playing dumb. You know damn well what that means. <laughs> You know what she wants, okay? She wants your pee pee and her vee vee. She gets so fed up, she basically pulls a Kimbali. <laughs> Why don't you want to have sex with me though? I don't understand. We will have sex. No, when? And she basically tells him, you have 48 hours to stick it in me or I'm gone, baby. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, when we're talking about the physically, I need a little uh, time with you. And then I feel some my main energy coming up and looking. Who is that woman there? Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, he said a whole lot of nothing. He basically told her he's not feeling turned on. <laughs> so he's telling her, when I feel turned on, I will, you know, I will act on it. It seems like things are gonna get so much worse and it's gonna get worse real fast. I think their segments are going to end really soon, especially in that confessional we saw for the preview for the next episode where she's like, bye, bye boy, bye. And he walks away. He's kind of a douche also. But um, yeah, I feel like their story is going to end very soon, which I'm not complaining about. Like, goodbye. I'm done. Bye-bye. Next couple. Oh, we're getting the closet mom soon. The guy with the 25 animals, I cannot wait. So goodbye, Justin Igor, Nikki, goodbye. Let's talk about Ashley and Manuel. Beep, 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 beep. The fire alarms are ringing. There's smoke everywhere. Ashley's in the room cooking up a spell. Ooh, Manuel's coughing. <laughs> and he asks her, what the heck are you doing? Oh my God, you're going to burn the whole entire house down. She's like, don't you feel the energy, Manuel? Oh my God, that's my congested nose. I'm sorry you had to listen to that. Oh, so gross. She's like, don't you feel the energy, Manuel? The energy. And he's like, what energy? Woman, you're weird. <laughs> I'm so relaxed, she says. <laughs> Later in the day, they get into an argument because Manuel couldn't connect his phone to the internet, like the phone that he brought from Ecuador, and he really needs it to talk to his family. Now, Ashley felt bad about this, so she called her cell phone company, bought him a brand new phone, and arranged it to arrive in two days so that he can finally have a phone and connect it to the internet. Well, he wasn't happy about it. He was like, I don't need a new phone. I need the internet. And so she felt really offended that he wasn't appreciative of her nice gesture. And she's like, why can't you just wait two days for your brand new phone to come so that you can connect it to the internet and talk to your family? Also, 
In the meantime, I have many other devices. I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, I have an iMac. You can use any of them right now to talk to your family. Like, I'm not holding you back. Please talk to your family. Use my devices. And he's like, no, I want my phone. And I want my phone to connect to the internet now. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why they're fighting. And you guys, I'm just going to be honest. I did fall asleep for a little bit. And then I woke up and continued the episode. I didn't bother to stop, rewind, and watch it. So sorry if I'm missing some parts. But anyway, she leaves the house to meet up with her sister to vent about Manuel. And apparently his family is blowing up her phone nonstop calling her because she they want to talk to him. And she's getting really annoyed and she thinks it's sketchy. But I feel like it's understandable because his phone isn't working. So they only know of her contact. So I feel like it's normal for them to contact her to talk to him because his phone's not working. But she's like really sketched out and she's getting very annoyed. So she tells Manuel, all your cousins of cousins of cousins are calling me 10 times in a row. Like, why are they calling me nonstop? And he's like, I don't know. What do you want me to say? They want to talk to me. She's like, call them. And so he calls his cousin on FaceTime and Ashley is very nice. She's like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Ashley. So I just want to know, um, why do you keep calling 10 times? (laughs) and she goes oh it was because I was worried about him I didn't hear back from him he hasn't been responding and Ashley's like oh okay I understand by the way how many family does he have in New York and the cousin goes oh mucho 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 now for some reason that worries her um Ashley feels like he's using her for a green card or he might be using her for a green card just to stay with his family in New York now I don't know the laws I don't know how immigration works but can't Like his family sponsor him if he really wanted to be in New York, like he didn't have to find a fake wife, right? No, I don't know. Somebody tell me in the comments, but she's worried that he might be using her or that if they get into a fight that he's just going to up and leave and go to his family in New York. I mean, honestly, like, why wouldn't he? I feel like that's not sketchy. If you and your girlfriend break up and then you have family in New York that you just go to them. (laughs) I wonder if she feels threatened by his family. Like if he didn't have anyone or if he didn't know anyone, she would feel more secure that he would kind of have to depend on her and have to lean on her and have to listen to her. That's kind of the vibe I got. Now we meet a brand new couple, Nick and Devin. I can't believe we have Devin and Jihoon 2.0. And the American, the woman, is actually named Devin again. Like, what are the odds? I don't know any Devins. I've never heard of a Devin until this show. So the fact that they got another Devin (laughs) who's dating a guy from South Korea, that's crazy. So we meet 31-year-old Nick, who's an electrical engineer from South Korea, who's lived in Australia for the last six years. And he's dating Devin, an American. She's the first white girl he's ever dated. And she's from Arkansas. Now, I don't know much about Arkansas, but according to her, um, it's not very diverse. According to him, Asian girls are just too skinny for him. They're not his type. He likes that Devin is super athletic and very fit. Now, we learn their nicknames for each other. Apparently, she calls him Monkey and he calls her Piggy. Like I said, she's from Arkansas and Devin warned him about how Arkansas is pretty racist and there's definitely no Korean restaurants or Korean stores. There's not much diversity and yeah, he's going to probably face some racism there. Yay, sounds fun. Devin's always wanted to go to South Korea, so she's finally going for the first time to see him. What she doesn't know is that he plans to propose to her on this trip. But there's a catch. He needs his parents' approval. So that's their goal for the trip, to get his parents' permission and approval for him to marry an American girl. It's her arrival day, and he talks about how he's super excited to touch her, to feel her, and to hug her. And yeah, she's probably going to be really jet-lagged, but he doesn't care. He's still going to break the bed tonight. I'm pretty sure she's going to have jet lag, but I don't care. Tonight, I'm going to break the bed for sure. What the is up with the season and the men who don't care about how tired their partners are and they just want to get it in no matter what he's waiting for her at the airport and she finally walks out and he's crying and he's like yes piggy come here piggy oink oink my piggy piggy oink oink i mean i think he called her piggy about 45 times and i don't really know if she likes it i i actually don't think she does but she says she's just gotten so used to it and she even told him it's offensive in America. It's not a term of endearment. But he's like, well, I use it as a term of endearment. So I'm going to keep using it. 
I just don't understand why people insist on calling their partners a nickname that their partner does not like. I think that's very weird. Even if it weren't an offensive nickname, um, for example, like I don't like calling my partner's baby. I just don't like the word baby in a romantic context. And I don't like being called baby. And so uh, one of my ex-boyfriends, he used to call me baby. And I was like, hey, I'm just going to be honest. I I feel weird being called baby. Like it's just I can't get used to it. And he was like, OK. So he started calling me honey, which I was so much better with. Now, if he were to insist on calling me baby, I'd be like, why? Just stop calling me baby. I don't like it. Like, just change the word. And that's where we pretty much left off. Now, I did notice that Devin put up a social media post after the first episode aired, kind of defending herself. I guess people are making a lot of mean comments about how she seems slow or um, she looks so different in her pictures. And I felt so bad for her. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how she's going to handle the immense criticism that the, you know, just the audience and the viewers have. I mean, by any chance she's watching this video, the only advice I have for you, girly, is try your best not to like read stuff about yourself. A lot of people make up lies. It's the internet. And if you're super sensitive, just stay away, girl. Stay away. Just a little quick shout out to my Patreon members. I love you guys so much. I don't know if everybody gets notifications on Patreon because it's not like an app that people are on all the time. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know I dropped a new vlog a couple days ago. So if you didn't watch that, go ahead and watch it. Well, that's it for the recap. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.